Good day fellow investors, welcome to the weekly stock market news where we share interesting fundamental news about what's going on. Today we'll discuss oil and how the demand and supply fluctuates, Norilsk and nickel, uranium and Cameco, and we'll discuss two new interesting recession indicators, instability in Europe, and finalize by answering the question, will the stock market continue to go up? Immediately start with US oil production and you can see how in 2016 when oil prices were low it declined significantly and now it increased again and it's back to 2015 levels that created the drop in oil prices. Thus we have now a situation with oil that if prices increase production increase so we can expect a lot of volatility. I would expect prices to drop again even below 40 when there is again an oil glut which will be volatile. Don't expect stability in oil price. On top of everything just look at the long-term projections from US production. It is about to double or even more in the next seven years. However, oil demand is expected to grow very very slowly and this analysis comes from Exxon which is strongly based in favor of oil and they see very very slow demand growth. If you look, look at Exxon's global transportation energy mix in their outlook for 2040 you can see that electricity in transportation is practically unused a little bit on other and their views of what will happen to the car market is that electric vehicles will maybe gain a few percentage points of market share in the next 22 years. Exxon, okay, they look they have to protect their own business. However, with seeing what's going on with China, with Germany, with the dropping cost of batteries, I would stay away from oil because if just that market share, Exxon's predicted market share from now what is 2-3% goes to 10-20% with the production oil, with the investments we will see oil at 10-20-30 per barrel in the long term. So take advantage of the swings in oil prices but don't invest on the long term, don't bet on those nice fat dividends because everything will change very fastly, is changing extremely fastly and therefore I would be aware of investing in old-fashioned businesses, especially oil. This is very interesting, nickel prices have spiked in July and August and then dropped at the same speed. However, Norilsk's stock price continues to rise. This is because Norilsk is diversified and copper prices and palladium prices continue to rise. That's good about having a diversified miner that can work with these ups and downs in the industry. However, long-term nickel prices are expected to grow and you can see here two forecasts. So there is plenty, plenty more upside in Norilsk. Very good fundamental basis to invest in a trend in a company. And we have also discussed how nickel is used in the battery for electric vehicles. This was very interesting. Scotia downgraded Cameco on weak uranium outlook. Everybody knows uranium is weak, outlook is very weak and then in one day Cameco dropped 6% and we can see how again it is very very cheap in comparison to past prices. It could be a very good idea now to look again at Cameco when it's below 10. Don't look at it when it's at 12 like it was at the beginning of the year of or 11. It's very volatile, the, there is weakness in the uranium sector so take advantage of that volatility in order to posi position yourself by when there is pessimism not optimism. The two recession indicators this is the economic growth in the world's largest 45 economies. As you can see we are now in 2017-2018 is the same situation as it was in 2006 and 2007. All economies are growing and it led to the next inflation. So when all economies are growing, even if a few falter, there is potential recession and a slowdown globally. So when everything is good, there 
likelihood of a recession is higher than when things are bad. It is also funny that the industrial sentiment in Europe is exactly where it was in 2007 and 2011, just before the two previous recession in Europe. What's also interesting related to Europe, the current turmoil surrounding Barcelona, Catalonia, independence in Spain has really increased the risk of the country, perceived risk from the market and increased interest rates. Now, of course, these are minor increases, but if the troubles persist in any European country, that can quickly have a very negative effect on that country and spill over across Europe because Spain's government debt to GDP ratio is 100%, Portugal 140%, Italy 142 So imagine what just a crisis, political crisis in one of those countries and all speak about independence, leaving the euro, blah blah blah, could mean for Europe. High risk situation even if it doesn't seem like that now. To conclude this news with answering the question, will the stock market continue to go up? This is a very interesting chart. The Bank of Japan owns 60% of all Japanese ETFs. So the Bank of Japan, Japan owns bonds, stocks, everything they can own. They have printed so much money, they have bought so much assets that the Japanese ETF market and it spills over all around the world is completely distorted. So if they continue buying, the stock market all around the world will go up, the same as what's going on in Europe. What's very interesting, the number of IPOs is going down. Could this be because there is no business to develop? There is so much competition and you cannot enter the market anymore, it doesn't pay. So people prefer to invest in stocks, buybacks, instead of investing in new companies. Because it's better to buy the S&P 500 than in, to invest in a risky IPO. This is not good because this signals that something is wrong in the market. However, as long as the monthly mutual fund and exchange trade fund flows are positive, stocks will continue to go up. Now the flows have shifted a little bit from US equity, which is still positive. This means that the S&P 500 will continue to grow as long as pension funds have money, as long as there is liquidity, everything will grow. Global equity is also growing, catching up with US equity, so you might want to catch that trend in global equities and we have seen a lot of stocks, especially Chinese, explode. Fixed income, there is money, so everything is also growing despite the in low interest rates. The fear and greed indicator is at maximum levels, everybody thinks stock prices will just continue to go up and it's extremely greedy. So if you want to listen to Buffett and his saying be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. What's Buffett doing? He has 100 billion in cash and has been piling up that cash because he's struggling to find worthwhile deals. So he's not buying, he's waiting. And he can wait for eternity because he's not in a rush, he is sitting on 100 billion dollars. The stock market, if things stay as they are, will continue to go up. The Fed is just cosmetically increasing interest rates. ECB is doing nothing. Bank of Japan just continue with what they are doing. We can expect the trends to stay as they are for now, for the next three, six months, a year, two, who knows. The market is distorted by the buying, so don't fight the trend. Don't short the market of those things because it's very expensive and you might lose because it's not smart to find the trend. As soon as I see something changing, something that might change the fund flows and that might turn the stock market into negative ter territory, that would then start a downward spiral, I will try to notify you immediately so that you can prepare accordingly. For now, everything looks very, very stable. Extremely risky, extremely dangerous, so position yourself accordingly, but for now it looks stable, so there is time. We'll see. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. We do weekly news, we analyze stocks, we analyze sectors, we analyze macroeconomic environments, and we try to make the highest profits with the lowest risk. I'll see you in the next video.